Dr. Art Reingold from UC Berkeley joining us now. We've been watching the coverage unfold all day long, certainly since noon in the ship dock. But what we want to talk about is, in your opinion, should we have brought these thousands of people who possibly were exposed here into Oakland to this port and then possibly at putting the general public at risk? So I live in Oakland. Uh, and I'm pretty comfortable that this was a perfectly reasonable and safe thing to do. The people in charge of this particular evacuation of a ship are, are doing it the right way. Um, and I think we can be pretty confident uh, that it really doesn't pose a risk to people in the community. I'd be happy to go into more detail about that, but I'm quite comfortable about Well, they're that. not at risk because the general public isn't going into that area and all these people, there's a system. They're going to be quarantined, they're going to certain places, they're going to be locked down if they need to, or self-quarantined and all. Correct, and, and I think that, that you know, I'm, I'm quite certain they will be repeatedly test negative mm. uh, for this virus before they're basically allowed to go home, whether home is in the Bay Area, whether home is in Los Angeles or Canada or someplace else. I'm quite certain the authorities will ensure that they are test negative before they're allowed to go back into the community. So you're pretty much saying there is no risk at this point to the general public. Do you feel like enough is being done, not only in this situation, but just across the Bay Area to slow the spread of the coronavirus? So saying there's no risk, uh, I think, is a somewhat strong statement. I think with regard to this ship and the disembarkment of passengers from that ship, uh, there's effectively no risk. But we do have the virus in the community. We have had cases and unfortunately deaths. Um, so we know the virus is here. So, so people are at some risk of becoming infected with this virus uh, in the community, here in Seattle, in uh, a lot of other places. So if, if it isn't a high risk, should people feel very safe in going out in, into the public? Events have been canceled. People are telling, being told from their employer, telecommute if you can, stay at home. But it, generally speaking, go to the grocery store, or the movie, anything, is it okay? Well, I'm still going to the grocery store and doing my grocery shopping uh, and uh, going to the gym in the morning and doing those types of activities. So I'm, I'm fairly confident that the risk is acceptable. Um, but, you know, I think we do want uh, older people, people with severe underlying illnesses to, to consider seriously what, what uh, activities are really important and which ones they, they might uh, avoid uh, because we know they're at very great risk of getting very sick if they get this virus. So, so this all has to do with what we call mitigation, trying to fundamentally reduce the likelihood that the virus will be transmitted and people will get sick even if we can't get that down to zero. Lower the risk. And mm -hmm. Dr. Engel, we've been watching these pictures as passengers have been disembarking from the cruise ship. Give us a sense of what you think. Do you feel as though they're doing a good job here? Could more be done? I mean, you do see passengers there um, at the port and they are tightly packed together. Um, they're wearing masks, but could more be done? I don't think so. I, as, as I said, I've, I've looked at what, what's been described in terms of how they're being handled. Uh, I don't see anything uh, that, that bothers me or concerns me in terms of the fact they're waiting in line for their temperature check before they board the bus or whatever. Uh, they're wearing masks, and, and we know this is mostly spread through droplets. So, so I'm pretty comfortable that they're doing it right. We've seen up in the state of Washington and certainly in, in Wuhan, China, too, most of those who have died of this are, are the elderly, and they're health systems are compromised, they're chronically ill. Children, not being, oftentimes with the flu, we hear it's the elderly and it's chil young children. Is it interesting that children are not so susceptible to this? Is that something that's gonna probably be studied? That's certainly something that will be studied. I, I think people will be astonished if it turns out that young children or children of, and, and young adults are not uh, getting this infection. And, and if they are getting this infection, they obviously, for the most part, are not getting very sick. Of course, we did have some tragic severe illnesses and deaths among young healthy uh, healthcare workers in China. Uh, who do various doctors and, and, and nurses, other healthcare providers, who, as far as I know, uh, were mm -hmm. quite young and healthy, but nevertheless uh, died. So there are no guarantees that just because you're young, uh, you'll have a, a, a benign course. But you're absolutely right. The highest risk of severe illness and death from this virus, just like with flu, uh, is in the frail elderly, the kind of people who might be in a nursing home, uh, people who have cancer and other, other underlying health problems. Mm -hmm. 
you know, something I think that is really important to do um, is to speak to the community of Oakland. I know there was a lot of pushback when uh, Mayor Libby Schaff announced that this cruise ship will be docking at the Port of Oakland. You said yourself that you are also a resident of, of Oakland. So if you were going to speak directly to the community, uh, why should they not be fearful? Well, as I said, I, at the risk of repeating myself, I think this is being done right uh -huh. by people who know what they're doing, who have the right equipment. Uh, and, and so I just think the likelihood that somebody from this ship is going to introduce the virus uh, into the community is vanishingly small. Things like telling employees to telecommute, UC Berkeley, I guess, is going to video classes. Stanford did the same thing last week. These are all good steps? Yes, these are all mitigation steps, what we call social distancing, mm -hmm. uh, basically trying to reduce the frequency with which people interact and might uh, transmit a virus. So the idea is that if we can do that, we might be able to uh, reduce the number of infections or at least spread them out so that as mm -hmm. people who are very sick get sick, there's not quite the enormous crunch on our hospitals, intensive care units, healthcare system. Yeah. What about in terms of containing the virus? Are we, are we just beyond that at this point? Is it just out there in the community and it's too late? I think we're pretty much past the point where containment, as we typically envision it, is, is very likely. Um, so uh, containment is very difficult, uh, and I think at this point we're really talking more about mitigation. Now, of course, uh, China uh, used incredibly uh, strong measures uh, to try and, and tamp down transmission, and there's evidence that they managed to, to do that. But they took some pretty draconian measures that I'm not quite sure we're ready to take. And is that why we're now seeing a decline in cases coming out of Wuhan, coming out of that area? That's what every expert believes, and so I think the evidence supports that. But frankly, we still have more to learn. And quickly, we, earlier in our coverage, we talked to you about a vaccine and the likelihood of that happening in a certain time frame. What, what's, what are your thoughts on an effective vaccine for coronavirus? So I think, and I'm not a virologist or an immunologist, so I want to preface my remarks by saying that, but I, I think there's reason to be encouraged uh, that we could make an effective and, and safe coronavirus vaccine, but it takes a great deal of research uh, to do that and, and to assure ourselves that it's safe and effective. So I'm cautiously optimistic uh, that we, we can do that. But frankly, it's a ways off. Um, we, it is certainly a ways off. And to be honest, there's still some viruses we don't know how to make vaccines against. So HIV is a good example. Hepatitis C is a good example. So uh, it's not a certainty that we can make a, an effective vaccine. I think at this point there are at least 100 countries who've reported at least one case of coronavirus. Is this now a pandemic? So, you know, the dictionary definition of a pandemic is a little squishy. Mm -hmm. uh, and to be perfectly honest, I'm not sure it matters whether we call it a pandemic or not. I, I personally think it meets criteria for being considered a pandemic. But if the World Health Organization or other experts don't agree with me, uh, I don't think it matters. I think what mm -hmm. we know is we have the virus, transmission of the virus in large parts of the world. The virus has the capability of making some people really sick and, and, and killing them. And that's a serious public health problem globally, whether you call it a pandemic or, or something else. All right, Dr. Art Reingold, uh, infectious disease expert from UC Berkeley. Thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate, Appreciate the insight. It. Sure.